This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this section, I'm talking about SQL Developer, the tool we use to connect to the database and do most of our programming. So this has a few DBA features, but it's really the developer tool, which is obviously called SQL Developer. I'm hoping Oracle leaves it that way. I like to have a developer tool that's geared totally towards developers and does what developers need, and a DBA tool that does what DBAs need. Usually because when I'm wearing one hat, I'm not flipping back and forth. So onto SQL Developer, you can see we have the menu. It's a pretty standard menu. I'm going to cover some of these options in this brief introduction. You can get to pretty much everything you can get to from a menu down below by clicking on whatever you want and then right-clicking. And it gives you a context-sensitive menu that gives you specific to that item. So for the most part, I'm going to stay down here rather than covering menus. First thing is the connections. I have connections to a lot of different databases. The connection name, you can call anything you want. I usually say what the user is, at sign, which database I'm connecting to. So like if I was connecting to Joe at Oracle PE, it would be that. I'll say Joe. You can save the password or not. And down under the user area, you choose where you're going to connect. You can use the TNS entries. You can do a basic connection. TNS is set up when you install the database. When you install the client, your DBA will give you a TNS file. Basic is easy if you know the server name, the port that it's connecting to, and the name of the database. There we go. So I was able to do it. And I can connect directly, or I can save it. I'll go ahead and say save the password, save the connection, go ahead and connect. And now I've got a Lewis connection and a Lewis 2 connection. So that's the basics of creating your connection. You can see now I have all my connections down here. I have my, the one I already was and the one I just created. If we come in here, it lists basically the data dictionary below the connection. And you can see I've got tables, a few views, a few indexes, no packages, a couple of procedures, functions. Okay, so down here, like I said, that's the data dictionary, and you can list through. Now, another place that you might find yourself going is other users, which is at the bottom, and you can see all the other users in the database. If you have permission to any other user's objects, you'll see it under them, just like the data dictionary is under your connection. Lewis is set up as DBA, so I can see all the connections. That's the navigator. This is how you go from one place to another. If you're familiar with Toad, there's actually another way to look at the navigator, and it's called Schema Browser. And you can pick the user you want, what you want to see, and then when you click that, it's over in the right. So I want to see all tables. I've got my tables. I click on Employees. And it shows me the structure, and you can see the data and all that good stuff. All right, so this is the alternate view of the navigator called the browser. And you get to that right click on the connection and choose Schema Browser. I'm used to the SQL Developer navigation now, so I don't often use that. All right, to the right, we have our code area. If we're looking at a table, it's our data and everything about what we're seeing on the left panel. If we have a SQL panel or an editor, we can edit code here. To do that up here, open a new SQL worksheet. It'll ask where do you want to connect. And you can say, hit F9 or the Run button. And you can see from the data, if you just saw the SQL Plus demo I did, much easier to read the data in SQL Plus. The default date isn't set up like this. You can change the date preferences under the database. NLS, and you can give it the format mask that you want to see. And the editor is extensive for customizing. And if you enter in there, you get a search and shows you all the options that are related to whatever you typed in. So in the SQL Plus, I had a procedure I created. So I'm going to go ahead and create that procedure again. You can see it compiled. 
And here I'll enter exec, the name of the stored procedure, which is hello world. And then I'll execute the function. And I executed the anonymous block. And first thing to turn on my DBMS output, just like I had set server output on in SQL plus. You tell it which database you want to see server output from. Sometimes it takes a second. There we go. All right. So it showed up. And there's my output. So this is our editor, the view from our query, and then DBMS output if we want to see DBMS output. We also have some DBA functionality. You can see the storage stuff. I'm going to cover this in a later section on uh, DBA tasks. But just so you know, you can say view DBA, and you'll see the DBA tab. If you want to see other objects as you need them, the help is pretty good in SQL Developer. So you can navigate, browse from this side. You actually do your programming and SQL development here, and then you have your data down here. Now, something I'm going to cover in a later section is the data modeler. It's got an actual data modeling tool that you can develop entity relationship diagrams. I'm not going to do that right now. Like I said, there's a section kind of dedicated to modeling that I will show you how this works, just so that you know it's there. That's tied to the data modeler, the navigate. The run, as you're running PLSQL, you can debug. You can run directly. You can tie into a version control tool, and then you have your other tools. We actually will cover monitor sessions and database unload later. So that's it for the introduction to SQL Developer. You'll see this tool quite a bit in upcoming chapters.